Okay, so this is like the third iteration of this video I'm attempting, so if I sound a bit scatterbrained, I apologize. When it comes to the world of 8 scale buggies, there are a lot of options to choose from, even more than 10 scale. And in this video, I'm going to go over a few of them for you, talking about their strong points and their not so strong points, and allow you to come to a conclusion as to whether or not they're for you. Before we begin this video, I'd like to set some ground rules, starting with the fact that this video will be a two-parter. In this part, I'll only be going over pillow ball cars. In the next part, I'll be going over C-Hub cars. Also, since I'll be going over pretty much every 8 scale buggy I can find, this won't be a very in-depth video on each brand and platform, so I won't be going over RTRs for the most part in this video. Racing brands only. The last things I want to go over before we actually begin would be my sponsorship, starting with the EuroRC. If you live in the European Union or the UK, feel free to use code ROACHRC5 at checkout to save a little bit on your next purchase. Next up we have CowRC. CowRC recently sent me this tire and wheel cleaner and it's actually been working out pretty well for me so far. So if you want to buy that or any other other products, feel free to use code ROACHRC all caps at checkout to save a little bit on your next purchase. And lastly we have A Main Hobbies. Anything you guys buy using the link in the description below will directly support me as well. That out of the way, let's get started on talking about what a pillow ball car actually is. Now a pillow ball system refers to how the front suspension geometry is set up and its construction. In a pillow ball car, you have an upper and lower arm, in which two balls are attached at the end. These pillow balls are then put into a front carrier that houses the front hubs and axles. You adjust your camber using spacers instead of the usual turnbuckles, and they tend to be more durable than the other front suspension system I'll go over in the next video. Because of this, and because of the way pillow ball cars tend to drive, being more aggressive specifically, more companies have gone the pillow ball route for their 8 scale buggies and e-buggies. There are many different pillow ball cars out there, so let's get started with probably the most common one in the United States at least, the team associated B4 and B4E. Now the B4 and B4E are the latest platform of buggies from Team Associated and they even have truck versions of these two buggies if that's what you're into. Also they're probably one of the more versatile buggies on the market today as even the Nitro version has a rear wheel weight bias chassis and a regular chassis and there are multiple ways you can mount your batteries for the B4E as well. Now I have a decent amount of driving time of the B4E under my belt and I must say even though it was a handful from time to time especially on very bumpy tracks like for example the North Georgia shootout you're seeing on screen right now, it was a very capable buggy that taught me how to drive and tune a pillow ball buggy. The only thing that sort of rubbed me the wrong way with this buggy would be the way it sort of skated around under high speed, however this could be down to my setup, driving style, or even rear wing choice. Now another advantage that the B4 and B4E has over its competition is part support. Associated parts are usually stocked at pretty much any and every hobby shop that has anything to do with racing and those parts themselves usually don't cost an arm and a leg. Another th good thing about AE is the fact that since it's so popular, there's a plethora of information and tips out there that can help you improve with the buggy. From team drivers being able to help you out, to simple posts on Facebook or Pettit RC where you can find setups on pretty much any car you can think of. The only real downside that AE or Associated has compared to the competition would be its build quality and durability. Now don't get it twisted. Associated cars are built very well, and when it comes to durability, they are very much out there, or up there. But there are other brands out there that have better durability and better build quality. And that starts with the next brand we're going to be talking about, Mugen Seiki. Mugen have been around in the 8 scale racing space for a little while now, and they very much know how to make a really good buggy. Currently, the two main buggies on sale from Mugen would be the Mugen MBX-8R and MBX-8R Eco, both of which are out have been out for a little while and both still extremely capable buggies in their own right. That also reminds me, if you want to have a buggy that will last a long time without the manufacturer coming out with a new version the next year, Mugen buggies would very much be a good platform to go with. The MBX8 platform as a whole has been out for a very long time and they don't usually come out with a new buggy unless it's a world's year and there are things they see they can improve on. So far, after pretty good results worldwide, it seems like Mugen is content to run the MBX 8R platform at least for a little bit longer. Another thing to take into account with Mugen as a whole is their stellar build quality, only rivaled by one other brand I'm going to get to later. Everything fits together well and there's very little binding in the components. Another big positive that Mugen has over other brands comes down to one singular man, and that man's name is Adam Drake. Adam Drake is one of the oldest pro drivers still racing today. Even though he doesn't make too many A mains these days at international events, he's still a very good driver who knows what he's talking about. 
Normally, I wouldn't talk too much about the Pro drivers attached to a particular brand, but he's an exception due to the fact that he puts out a lot of instructional videos regarding buggies in general, but also the Mugen platform specifically. And he's been doing it for years now. If there's anything you're unsure about when it comes to your buggy, specifically when it comes to engines or your buggy itself, Adam Drake has probably done a video on it at length. As for how the Mugen drives out of the box, well even with light differential fluids out of the box, the car tends to be very aggressive compared to other pillowball cars. This is entirely due to the geometry of the car and how they set it up throughout. This can be considered a good thing or a bad thing depending on your perspective and how good you are at driving. For me, when I had the Mugen, it was kind of an issue to get used to its driving characteristics. This, then again, this is also the only time I ran Nitro, so I'm guessing it had a lot to do with that too. Another thing that's kind of neutral about the buggy is its part support. You can find Mugen racing parts at most hobby shots in the US that are attached to tracks and big race time like events, for example, AMS or DNC. As for Europe, it's very much like techno here in the US. Lots of part support across the board. However, at a micro or club level, parts from Mugen cars tend to be a bit more scarce than, say, associated, specifically in the US. This isn't the biggest negative that Mugen actually has, though. Their biggest negative has more to do with this. Mugen kits when they're new are really expensive. When they came out, the Mugen MBX8R was $840, 200 bucks more than most other competing buggies at the time. Parts on the other hand are reasonable, but not entirely what you'd call cheap. And even though the Mugen MBX8R is cheaper now, I don't expect the next generation of Mugen buggies will be similar price to how they are at the time of writing this script. Overall, the Mugen Seiki MBX8R and MBX8R Eco are both very good buggies in their own right and very high quality. However, if you want something a little bit different and happen to live either in Europe, specifically Spain or Portugal, or in the United States, specifically Southeastern United States, may I recommend our next brand, S-Works. S-Works is a brand I know very little about in terms of their history. What I do know is they recently have gained a lot of traction in the RC racing world, specifically here in the southeastern US, and the reason for this being simple. If you're in the US, chances are you have probably heard of Beach RC. They're an RC hobby shop based in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and they're a primary distributors of S-Works buggies and parts in the United States. What this means is that if you're either physically close to Beach RC geographically, or you run at a track they tend to visit with their trailer of many things is that you can find parts for them. As for how available parts are in Europe, you guys are going to have to fill in the gap for that one because I haven't the slightest clue. What I will say, at least make sort of an educated guess, is that since X-Works is a European company, I would imagine finding parts for them shouldn't be too difficult there. Current buggies from S-Works would be the S35-4 and the S35-4E. In terms of price, they tend to be right on par for if not a bit more expensive than some of the buggies I've mentioned so far, and we'll mention going forward. As for how they tend to drive, well, they seem to be pretty standard in terms of a pillow ball car conforms. Aggressive while being driven from the rear, if that makes sense. In terms of their popularity, they seem to be all over the place here in the southeastern US, and have a pretty good following in Europe, so if you're worried about not being supported at a club level, I wouldn't be. Overall, S-Works is a very good brand if you want something that's very solidly built and well supported at a club level, especially if you live in the southeastern United States, or in most parts of Europe. Now for a more luxury feel, may I support X-Ray. X-Ray I have a personal history with, as my first ever racing brand RC car I ever used was an X-Ray T3 touring car. It was a lot of fun, if a bit expensive. And that leads me to my next point. Let's get this out of the way. The kits are expensive, as are the spare parts. I'm talking $16 for a single A-arm expensive. However, what makes up for that expense is their fit and finish of everything is pretty good, almost unmatched by any other brand. Not only that, but because the cars and buggies are so well made, they tend to drive very well and can handle a decent amount of punishment. As of the making of this video, the current buggies that X-Ray produces are the 2023 XB8 and XB8E. However, this once again moves us over to the negative about X-Ray that I mentioned before in my tour drive buggy video. See, when it comes to X-Ray and their main flagship buggies and trucks, for example, their XB2 or XB8 buggies, they tend to release revisions and remakes yearly. Now I know not having the most up-to-date equipment for racing isn't necessary, 
but it is desired for a lot of people. Racers like to have the latest stuff, and to do so with X-Ray is a very expensive endeavor. Not everyone has the funds to or wants to spend $700 on a kit on a, every single year. So having the most of the main cars be released literally every year with sometimes small but sometimes large changes can be very expensive and kind of a deal breaker. Now another thing to understand about the XB8 and XB8E platforms is the fact that they can be run as C-Hub cars as well. However, since most team drivers on their level or pro level tend to run pillow balls anyway, and most of the resources revolve around the pillow ball system, I wouldn't look too far into it. What I did have to look far into was our next brand, WRC. I once heard that WRC was pretty much what JQ Racing was without JQ, and to be honest, that's pretty much the only exposure I had to them for a long while until I did some more research on them for this video. Much like S-Works, they're a fairly new brand that has done their best to etch their name into the world of competitive RC racing. Unlike S-Works though, they haven't had as much success, at least here in the United States. Recently, Sended, cancel, Sended RC cancelled their deal with WRC, Sended RC being their main distributor in the United States. Before we get too deep into that situation though, let's begin with the actual buggy. The WRC S3X and S3XE from the outset don't look too special. They follow a basic tried and true formula. However, what makes the WRC special is how it tends to drive compared to other pillow ball cars. Even though it is a pillow ball car, its driving characteristics more closely resemble a C-Hub car or a four-wheel drive wheeler in 10 scale. It's very smooth and predictable compared to most other pillow ball cars being more aggressive. This is probably more down to the geometry of the car and how it's constructed, but I can't exactly pinpoint why this is. This kind of leads me into their biggest negative of WRC cars, at least here in the US, and that's their scarcity. Not many people run WRC here in the States, and since Sended RC cancelled their deal with them not too long ago, finding parts of them has been even more difficult, and even though this may be different in Europe, it's not too much better. This is partially because WRC doesn't have much of a big pro-level presence compared to other brands. Now I'll make my opinion on what I like to call pro fever later in another video, but for now, I will say that because racers tend to want to emulate pro drivers, they will usually never even know about certain brands that may be great options for them otherwise. As a result of this, and the fact that WRC doesn't have too many big pro level drivers on their team, people tend to ignore them altogether. Which is a shame, because everything that I've seen on this buggy, it seems pretty solid, along with prices being quite reasonable. Now all of these cars I've mentioned up until this point have been kits, cars that you have to build yourself from scratch. However, for a lot of bashers out there, this isn't really a viable option, especially considering how busy we are these days. So if you want a different option, or an RTR, or at least a roller, I'd say go with this next buggy. I know I'm breaking my previous rule of no RTRs, but bear with me for a bit. The TLR Tune Typhon 6S is an RTR race spec buggy that comes with Spectrum Electronics. Unlike the TLR 8, it's a pillow ball car, and because of this it fits into our list. Even though this buggy isn't the absolute peak of build quality, and because it's an RTR chances the tires aren't going to be the best, but because it's an RTR buggy, and because it's branded as an Arma Typhon, it suddenly becomes a lot more accessible to people who bash and want to look into racing but don't want to spend hella money on a new kit that they have to build themselves from pieces. All you need to do with the TLR Tune Typhon is put a battery in and go. Another benefit that the Typhon has is the fact that it does have adjustability that you need to make it at least a little bit more how you like to drive. Again, it may not have the adjustment capability of say a race spec MBX8R Eco, but it does work well enough to get your foot in the door. As for part support, well, you'd think that because it's an Arma, who is owned by Horizon, one of the largest RC distributors in the world, that part support would be good. Well, even though the first two are true, for some reason a good chunk of the parts for this thing seem to be perpetually out of stock. Spoiler for the next video, this is also the case for the 8 buggy as well. So, if you want an easy way to get into RC racing, the TLR Tune Tarma Typhon 6S is very much a good buggy. Grab a battery, probably some new tires, and have some fun. Now like I said in the beginning of this video, this is the first part of two. So if I didn't mention a buggy that you were looking for in this video, Feel free to check out the next video that I'm going to be putting out very soon, as that will be going over Sea Hub buggies. Also, if you liked this video and wanted to see more, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel as well. Also, if you want to support me another way, you can subscribe to my Patreon, 
where I post updates and teasers as to when my next videos are going to come out. Speaking of which, I'd like to thank my patrons Michael Williams, RC World Discord server, Casey Nix, Ben Reeves, Dave Armstrong, Joe Jenkins, Rob Bettingfield, Caden Merckx, Ian Petrie, Spiro Harvey, Logan Jutkins, and especially Morrison Watt. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.